a town. It was destroyed by Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. The people were expelled from the town. And then the Lord placed a ban on them. They could never return to reclaim this town as their own. Never. They could come back as a tourist. That's okay. But you cannot return to reclaim this town as your own. No. Until. Until when? Until Gaga and Magaga released. And after they are released, they spread out in all directions, meaning they take control of the world. And so you now have the world order of God and Maga. And then with their power over the world, now you will see these people being brought back to that town to reclaim it as their own. Hmm? And so God and Magab are linked with a town, are linked with a special people. This is something in addition to the Arabs. God and Magab like to attack the Arabs, humiliate the Arabs with sexual perversions in the prisons of Iraq by a people who dare to call themselves civilized. And now we we'll say this was just an aberration. Which town is this that is linked to God and no God? This is something absolutely new to a Christian. I think so. If I'm wrong, I wish to be correct. Because the material which is available to the Christian and the Jew does not have this information. If I'm wrong, I would like to correct it. Which town is it? Destroyed by the Lord. The people expel. A ban placed on them that they can never return to reclaim that town as their own until until God and Magab are released. And after they are released, they spread out in all directions. Remember, they've been released in waves, eh? And when they spread out in all directions with their indestructible power, they take control of the world in the world order of God and Magab. Then you will see these people being brought back to reclaim that town. This book has dealt with that subject in detail. As I read these two verses of the Quran ten years ago in New York, like a flash it came to me, an intuitive grasp. Wait a minute. This is Jerusalem. Yeah. This is the Holy Land. This is the Jews. But that was only an intuitive insight. I had to go on now to do my homework. How to prove it? You can't prove an intuitive inside. Yes, it can be proved. It is Jerusalem. How? Let us go to all the statements of the Blessed Prophet on, on God and Magab, called Ahadith. So I collected all the Ahadith, and almost all. Now let me go to them and see whether there is any town mentioned linked with God and Magab which fits the description given in the Quran. So I went through all of this hadith and to my amazement, there is only one town mentioned, only one. And it is a town which fits the description. And it is Jerusalem. Yes. But in the hadith, of course, the word Jerusalem does not occur. The Arabic word occurs, Beit al which is Jerusalem. And so I came to the conclusion that the town is Jerusalem. And so the Quran was saying that when you see the Jews 
being brought back to the Holy Land, to Jerusalem, to reclaim it as their own. Two thousand years after the Lord had expelled them, out, you must know that this was made possible because of the world order of God and my God. I was amazed by this discovery. I said to myself, I couldn't be the first and the only one. I'd be very lonely to be the only one. And then shortly thereafter, as though the Lord guided me, I came across a booklet. A little booklet. If you come to my class on Thursday at half past six, San Fernando, Gamma Masjid, all of you are welcome to my class on Surah Al-Kaf. I'm going to bring that booklet to the class. Get it photocopied. So you could get a copy. You might have to pay a dollar or two dollars or so to pay. Okay. It was a booklet of Gog and Magog. Written in 1963 or somewhere around there. And the author of that booklet was a friend of my teacher, Mulana Dr. Fadur Rahman Ansari. I read the booklet and I found that the most important point of all made in the whole booklet was at the town of Jerusalem. The town of Jerusalem. The rest of the booklet didn't impress me so much. But this was impressive. And then in the preface, the author says, that he was grateful to Moana Dr. Ansari who guided him and explained the subject to him. And so I came to the conclusion, tell me if I'm wrong. I came to this conclusion, if you think I'm wrong, you can throw me out of the hall. I came to the conclusion that if this is the most important point made in this booklet, and if the author acknowledges his depth of gratitude to Dr. Ansari, who guided him and explained the subject to him, I came to the conclusion that Dr. Ansari also must have had a view that the town was Jerusalem. If it is an unreasonable conclusion, take me and throw me out of the hall. And so I was not the first. There were others, but very few. And so now we have reached an amazing point in our lecture. We are able to recognize those who control the world today with their indestructible power. We are able to recognize that their power rests on foundations which are essentially godless. We are able to recognize why they use power to oppress. We are able to recognize why they use power to wage war on the religious way of life. The religious way of life in general, but Islam and Muslims in particular. And we are able to explain that mysterious, mystifying, puzzling, baffling relationship between the white world order and the state of Israel. Now we can understand. If this is the world order of Gog and Magog, and if this is the world order which is bringing about globalization, and if inherent in that globalization process is the destruction of faith and all of mankind are being embraced in a godless melting pot, what do we do about it? If we have enemies whose power is such that we cannot, defeat them and destroy them. What do we do about it? 
If we know that this is part of the divine plan to send this evil storm to the world, what do we do about it? In the next lecture, which is Surah to look at from the modern age, you get the answer. But today we we'll attempt to give a brief look at the answer. But before I, how long will this storm last? How long will these oppressors continue?